Right, well, we've got to the last bit of this debate. It seems to have gone very quickly. Um, but this is the final section, and the proposition is, girls do not have enough information about their bodies, healthy relationships, and sexual health. And to begin this debate, I would like to call upon Heba, representing Plan International Ghana. Hello, like many youth in my country, I didn't have adequate information on relationships and sex education before, and I know the story isn't different here in the UK and across the globe. As a result of this, the youth are misinformed, and girls in particular are misled and sexually exploited. In some countries, it is perceived to be culturally indecent for parents to discuss sex education with their kids. Adults and children shy away from it, and the government doesn't seem to prioritize it much either. In this age of social media, where thousands of messages are sent across each second, the youth are still not taught much about online safety and the dangers of internet profanities like sexting and pornography. I want you to think, how many girls here would really feel comfortable discussing about their sexuality with a parent or any other adult? Most answers would certainly be a no. Most girls keep their worries about their periods to themselves and some may make school because of it, which has a negative impact on their education. Women make up half the world's population and periods are completely normal and should be seen that way. Early exposure of the youth to sex education is the building block of whatever we are discussing here today. They will be well informed, understand their body transitions, know when to say yes or no to sex, engage in healthy relationships, and make responsible choices. Without relationship and sex education, I have personally seen the effect, and girls in my community who became mothers who became mothers at an early age and were sexually exploited, which stopped most of them from continuing their education and achieving their full potential. Thank you. Thank you, Heba. And uh, I'd now like to call Rachel from Strathern School to speak about relationships and sex education. In some schools, girls are not properly taught about blood loss and what actually happens to them during this time and what kind of pain they would have to go through. Some girls feel that school management ought to give a little more information about what's going to happen to them and their bodies. A lack of knowledge means that one in seven girls didn't know what was happening when they started their period, while more than a quarter didn't know what to do. Some people feel like having it means that you've done something wrong and that you should feel ashamed about it. In the UK, 48% of girls feel embarrassed with this phase of life. A girl said, when I'm bleeding, I don't go to school. I'm afraid I'll get into my uniform and that the whole class will laugh. In some homes, girls and women have little or no access to sanitary products. According to a research survey, 27% of girls in the UK have overused a sanitary product because they couldn't afford a fresh one. Every month, girls in the UK face period poverty where 40% had to use toilet roll. How can we let this happen? This affects their physical, mental, emotional, and sexual health. They're unable to perform well in their tests and exams and other extracurricular programs, which impacts their careers in the future. They're stopped from achieving their dreams and by taking on new opportunities, which could have changed their life for the better good. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. And, uh, and next, I'd like to call Toby from Isca Academy.